directions. How are you all? I think you are locked at home at this time. So stay home, stay safe. So we are here to deliver some lessons for you during this time. So let, use your time productively. So the first chapter, what we are going to deal with, actually I am going to deal with chapter 15 as the first chapter, which is known as the improvement of food resources. So before we go into this lesson, so what are the learning outcomes, what we are going to learn at the end of this session. The first learning outcome is first you should know the importance of food. The second one, what is the necessity to improve the food production and number three, what are the methods to improve this food production. So about this we are going to see in this session. So first, this is a simple diagram which shows about the different functions of food or the importance of food. So if you take food, the first point what comes to our mind, the food gives energy to us. Yes, of course it gives energy in the form of nutrients. So what are the nutrients? So these are the list of nutrients, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, minerals. So these are the nutrients which are supplied by food. So food provides us nutrients. So these are the nutrients supplied by our food. So this gives energy. The next one, it helps in growth and development of our body. So food plays an important role in growth as well as in the development of our body. So this is about the importance of food. So from this we can understand food plays a vital role in our life. So without food we cannot live, without water we cannot live. So food is very very important to us to survive. The next one, if you take farming and animal husbandry, that is the food, actually food comes either from a plant source or animal source. So we have to develop or we have to grow the plants. So how to develop the growth of plants is by farming. How to develop the animal's growth is by animal husbandry. So we are going to deal in this lesson in elaborate the farming techniques and various animal husbandry techniques. So here the next topic what we are going to deal with is methods to improve the crop production. Actually our population is keep on growing. So for the growing population food is necessary. So food is our most important. As the population growth happens, the production of food also should increase the demands to get the demands of the people. So it is also very important. So how to attain this? So the scientists have thought of different methods to improve this crop production. So they brought about many revolutions. Revolutions is in the sense, the first scientists actually they observed the traditional farmers. The farmers had their own techniques. They started to cultivate the crops in their own way. So at the end what happened you know, the yield was less but even financially they were poor and they couldn't afford money to invest in the farm. So such problems were faced by the farmers by using the traditional method of farming. So later scientists started to think and they started to use many revolutions. They brought about different revolutions. So next I am going to tell about the list of revolutions which helped the farmers or which helped in the production of food. Actually, there are many revolutions which the scientists have planned to bring about. So here are a list of revolutions I would like to discuss with you. The first revolution is called Green Revolution. Green Revolution is to improve, it is started to improve the production of food grains. This is called Green Revolution. So how to remember this Green Revolution is, if you see the crops, it is greenish. So this refers to the Green Revolution, which is called production of food grains. The second one is White Revolution, which deals with the increased production of milk. Milk is white in color, so it is White Revolution. Third one is about oil seeds. So you know the color of the oil, you can guess, yes, it is yellow color. So it is called as yellow revolution. The next one is blue revolution. Often when you see, when you draw water, you used to color it with the blue. So blue revolution refers to the fishery, its production of fish. The next one is golden revolution where it deals with the production of 
fruits and vegetables. Next is silver revolution. As you know, egg is silvery white in color. So production of egg which deals with the silver revolution. These are some extra revolutions what I am dealing with. Actually in your textbook, the important two revolutions given is green and white. But when you go for many competitive exams, really these points will be helpful to you. So you can just note down, you prepare a hint's note, you maintain a hint's note where you can note down all these extra points or whatever I say, you can note down in your notebook and then you can read it. So it will be very useful for your competitive exams. The next one is round revolution is nothing but potatoes. The production of potatoes, we call it as a round revolution and increased production of meat. Meat usually pinkish in color. So you can write it as pink revolution. Pink revolution is increased production of meat. We call it as pink revolution. Let us learn two more revolutions. The first next one is a gray revolution where increased production of fertilizers is called gray revolution. The next one is Red revolution where production of tomatoes increase. So this, these are some of the revolutions where scientists have thought about and they have brought about to increase the production of crops. So when there is increase in the production of crops, it should be pollution free. That is, it should be environmental friendly. So once it is environmental friendly, it will not disturb the ecosystem. So that ecosystem will be maintained in an equilibrium. So whatever we are enjoying in the nature, so nature gives us so many things. So whatever we enjoy in the nature, we have to give to the next generation as such. So that is called sustainable agriculture or we can call it as evergreen revolution or sustainable agriculture. So once again I will tell what is sustainable agriculture is whatever nature gives us without affecting it, we are just giving the same to the next generation. We are saving the nature and giving the same to the next generation that is called sustainable agriculture. And we have to maintain the ecosystem also. The balance in the ecosystem is very very important. So these are the points which are given in the introductory part of the lesson. So with this I conclude my session and this is the introductory part. You can read the book page number where the introduction is given. Then let us meet in the session too. Thank you Akshayas.